Thank you, everyone. And uh, we look forward to the return of uh, our dear friend and uh, fellow light worker, David Schroeder. And he's a clinical and spiritual social worker and professional life coach with uh, 30 years of experience in the human development fields. In his uh, private practice, Transition Pathways, David offers a variety of techniques to assist individuals, couples, and groups in finding healthy pathways, pathways to love, higher awareness, and greater potential. He conducts workshops and retreats on topics such as Be Love, The Soul's Journey, Spirituality and Self-Esteem, The Path of Conscious Relationship, and The Power of Being. And David is also the author of a book, which I didn't realize until I received his updated bio this week. Just Be Love is his book, Messages on the Spiritual and Human Journey. And it's Creation and Abundance. Creation and Abundance tonight with David in just a few minutes. Creation and Abundance. And I'd like to start out by reading a passage from a book called uh, Bridge to Reality by uh, Paul Fanari. Um, he's an author that's been around a number of years. Um, he's written a half a dozen or so books. And he's one of these authors or writers that he can say in one page what many people would take a whole book to say. Um, so he has a wonderful way with words. Uh, he's a student of A Course of Miracles as well. And many of his writings kind of have some reference to the course. So this chapter uh, is entitled Creation. Only when I enter the garden of my innocence can I create. Until then, my creations are merely reflections of my own desire or fear. Until I experience my sinlessness, I cannot witness to the abundance of creation. For abundance does not come from desire, nor does it come from fear. Both desire and fear are conditions of scarcity. When I desire, I want what I do not have. When I fear, I am afraid of what I have can be taken away. The abundant heart of all creation knows nothing whatsoever of scarcity. Scarcity is an enormous and an erroneous belief imposed on the spontaneous flow of Tao, which is mother of us all. The great mother does not withhold from her children. Her children do not always get what they want when they want it. And they may respond by crying, sulking, or throwing a temper tantrum. It doesn't matter. It doesn't do any harm nor does it do any good. No praise, no blame. As the I Ching would say, you can't push the river, nor can you hold it back, no matter how hard you try. The river of life brings its abundance to all of us as we are ready to embrace it. If I feel worthy, that which I value will flow to me. If I feel unworthy, I will not receive what I value, for what I value reinforces my unworthiness. But I will receive what I need. I may not accept the gifts because I prefer another one, but this is my choice. Making that choice means staying in illusion. It means turning away from my abundance. The I Ching, he makes, he quotes the I Ching, which is an ancient text. Uh, and it's a book of changes, a very powerful text. And um, when he says in his passage there, you can't push the river, nor can you hold it back. Like water, life is meant to flow. And so the river of, the river brings to us, the river of life will bring to us 
what we feel we deserve. And our sense and belief in our own worthiness will match what we attract. This speaks of the law of attraction, which basically says what I think about, I bring about. We achieve what we believe. We are always broadcasting to the universe, not just with our conscious thoughts, but more importantly, through our subconscious thoughts and beliefs. And so the universe is always hearing our broadcast and it will offer what we communicate, either positive or negative. It doesn't matter to the universe. What we broadcast is what will be offered to us. And most people, they often focus and broadcast more on what they don't want. And so they get more of what they don't want because that's what they're asking for. Our worthiness is, our, is the value we hold of ourselves. And I'd like to demonstrate something, if I may. Let's imagine this is a $20 bill. And I need a little audience participation. How much is this $20 bill worth now? Would you still say it's 20? If you still say it's 20, raise your hand. Give a thumbs up, okay? How about now? Is it still worth 20? Show of hands, everybody still? You're not giving up the value? Well, let's say if I were to stomp on it with my foot, but I'm using my hands because we're doing it on Zoom. How much is it worth now? Still 20? So no matter what I do to this $20 bill, it got ripped, it got smashed, it got crumpled, and you won't give up its value. But think about in your own life, the times you've been ripped, you've been crunched, you've been stifled, people made fun of you or they ignored you, and how you might have given up your value because of other people's opinions of you. And that's what often happens in life. We very easily, because of the circumstances of life, what people say and do, we can very easily give up our value. And so keep this image in the back of your mind the next time you get ripped or you get torn apart or somebody steps on you with their words, their actions, be careful not to give away your value because of an outside circumstance. The universe always offers to us gifts of worthiness and abundance. The soul in human form from our life experiences, their lessons of worthiness and abundance for soul growth. And it's through our three free will that we either learn the lessons, we stay true to our value, our worthiness, or we keep repeating the lessons because we give away our value and our chance, the gifts of abundance. Consider creation happens in the darkness. The Big Bang came from the darkness. You plant a seed in the spring in the darkness of a soil for it to begin to germinate and develop in the darkness. A fetus in the mother's womb spends nine months in the darkness in order to develop and to create life. This time of year of fall, it's about gathering, it's about harvesting. Harvesting what we've created over the last several months. 
and to enjoy the fruits of our labor, which we could call abundance. And as we're starting to move into this time of winter, we go more deeply into the, the darkness, into the cold. And so we go within. And, and the winter is a time of reflection and to see what needs to be released within us, what no longer serves us, and more importantly, what needs to be created, what, what needs to be shown as anew, if you will. Creation not only happens in the darkness, it takes place from creation, which can be seen as a form of darkness. Nature shows us when parts of it is destroyed by natural or man-made causes. In due time, she begins to regenerate and create anew. So the universe in nature, as well as within our own being, the universe is always creating, expanding, and renewing. And since we are a part of the universe, we too are meant to create, expand, and renew. And it's oftentimes in our darkness, in our tragedies, in our grief, that that opportunity for renewal comes to be. Abundance, I would like to entertain, lies at the edge. There's a wonderful quote I saw a number of years ago when I was walking in a, near a stream in a nature preserve and it had a sign at the edge of the stream and it said, abundance is where the land, the water, and the air meet. And it is in that conjunction of the air and the land and the water that life is most abundant in nature. So life, I believe, asks us to go to the edge of ourselves and to life. And consider in nature the most beautiful and powerful times of the daylight are at the edge, the horizon of the east and then the west. When the sun rises and when the sun sets is when the sun is most majestic and powerful and often most beautiful and spectacular. When we go to the edge of ourselves, which to me means to go in to the center of ourselves. And when we go to the edge, we're saying yes to ourselves and to life. And more importantly, we're stepping out of our safety, out of our comfort zone, out of our familiar, which is often where the true growth and the abundance happens when we step out of the familiar and the comfort zone. And this is one of the powerful ways we manifest abundance. And we, we're saying yes to life and to ourselves. And we're willing to go to the edge with love and courage and worthiness. I found that the, the true, the deeper desires and knowing of love and the clues to our life are found much more um, in the unknown of ourselves in life, more so than the known. And this is part of going to the edge, is going to that unknown within ourselves and within life. Consider in these current and somewhat crazy times, yet they're transforming times to say the least. And within chaos, chaos is uncertain order. So everything's right on schedule. And much of what's going on in life has been predicted by the ancients. And as the old energies and ways are being dismantled, 
the new energies and ways in wondrous and glorious ways are right at our doorstep. Our role is to be patient and to persevere and to not lose sight of what's coming in positive ways for humanity and the earth herself. But many people in these transforming times and uncertain times are saying, I want to get back to normal. Normal is a third dimensional concept and that is gone. And the opportunity now is to create a new normal, both within ourselves and for the collective humanity. A normal that moves beyond the fear and the need to just survive and the limited. And to move more into the unknown, the land of opportunities and possibilities with a greater love and the sense of moving from surviving to thriving and the unlimited possibilities that are part of the makeup of the universe. It's all waiting for us, folks. Our thoughts, our beliefs, our choices will either keep us in that fear and survival mode or they will move us more into that fifth dimensional consciousness of thriving and tapping into the unlimited possibilities. This is what's known as self-actualization. And this is the fifth dimensional energies and vibration that's being offered to us. It's a wonderful opportunity. And each of us is making choices. And the choices are simply coming from within of either love or fear. Do you see your, your experiences as the teacher and the opportunity? Or do you see them as the threat and the enemy? Carl Jung said, I am the enemy that must be loved. How much value do I put on myself? What worth do I give myself? Everything in life on the spiritual level shows us not whether someone outside of us is loving or caring for us or to us. Everything in life shows us how much we love or do not love ourselves. And I would like you to entertain that we are moving as we move from the third dimensional consciousness to the fifth dimensional consciousness. The fourth dimension, which many people are in right now, is the bridge between what has been and what is to be. And so how are you navigating with that bridge? And are you willing to walk steadily and confidently across it? breaking free of the illusions of the third dimensional reality and coming into the, the higher reality of love and goodness and innocence. That is the opportunity that is offered us out of love from the divine realm. And so we are moving from this state of normal back to what I would call natural. And the COVID, COVID virus that's been with us for over a year and a half now was a pivotal experience for going from normal back to natural. And it was a pivotal experience to move us from being, we we're being shaken up so we can wake it up, waken up. And everyone is making choices, either from love or fear, from this COVID experience. 
And I'd like you to realize there will be many more experiences because it's my understanding that we have another eight to 10 years of chaos within the order of truly creating heaven on earth and the abundance that's offered. I would like to read a passage from my book, uh, Just Be Love. Um, the title of the book was actually a message that was given to me by Yeshua, Jesus, uh, back in 2010 when I was starting to write the book. And um, throughout the book, there are channeled messages from Yeshua. And this particular chapter is entitled Love and Abundance. And I had asked Jesus, Yeshua, what is abundance? And this was his response. And he makes reference to that quote I gave you earlier about the edge where the land and the water meet. Dear David, the above quote that you have about the edge refers to the edge of nature where the elements of land, water, and air meet. This is where part of the abundance of life lies. The edge for humans lies within their center. The edge is going beyond your comfort zone. The edge of within is where chaos meets order, where fear meets love. And the fear is embraced by love. It's then that fear remembers itself as love. It is here that your past and your future merge with your present, creating chatter, chattering duality to manifest oneness. Yes, life does manifest everywhere and anywhere. Yet the edge, the center of yourself, truly displays the passion and possibilities. Abundance is comprised of intention, belief, attention, and will. All of this is energy. You either create alliance or discard, discord with your higher self and the universe. Having the correct insight about how the universe governs itself and how to align yourself with this information is crucial to manifesting abundance. Your response to abundance must be of spirit. For this aligns your passion and your focused action. You create abundance through the awareness of spirit and what the spirit in you offers. Think of creation as the seed of life. Creation is what's planted for all of us. So as creation is the seed of life, abundance is the fruit of life. Abundance is the harvest. It's the gathering. It's what can truly begin to happen and manifest in our life if we align with the spirit and what it offers. Connect and embrace, dear ones, with the flow of the river of your life, the flow of the abundant universe, and feel worthy of this flow. Be the star to this flow. And the star, if you think of the, the letters S-T-A-R, my acronym for star is you surrender, 
you trust, you allow, so you can create and the R is receive the gift and the love of spirit. Abundance like love is our true nature. It's what we're here to experience and embrace. It is offered from the energies of love and worthiness. Embrace and accept the abundance that comes feeling worthy and deserving. And realize there's times when you might not get what you want. But from the spirit, from your soul's perspective, we always get what we need for our greatest learning and growth. So with that, I thank you and enjoy and embrace the abundance that is offered. Thank you, David. We're all stars. Surrender, trust, allow, and receive. I like that. I take that with me this evening and, and yeah, put that on my little wall here on my desk. I think it's a nice reminder and allowing us to look forward to the abundance that it, we're on the doorstep of and the, a lot of embrace the fears of change in front of us. That's quite the message tonight. And there's so much changes around. Uh, each and every one of us at this time with our, our worldly circles, and with, with employment, with the, our surroundings, with, with the pandemic. And uh, thank you for rounding us tonight and putting us uh, in lights of illumination. Thank you. Our pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. David, I liked what you said about normal. And I was going through a period of time and I said to my neighbor, I would just like to have one normal evening. And she said, Janice, normal is a setting on your washing machine. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> That's a good one. Thank you for sharing that. <laughs> so just, uh, just a comment that I was thinking First, before I get to that, I just want to say I completely agree with at least the majority of what you've said. Growth happens at the edges, and unless we're willing to embrace the edges of our reality, we're not going to grow. Um, the The comment that I have is more of a curiosity than anything else. Your demonstration with the currency, and as far as what is it worth and, and what are you going to do with it, there's an old voice still in my head that would say, well, if you burn it, then the, then the value would be lost. But then the other, the other side of that voice is saying, but currency has a defined value. Most things in life don't. So if you took like a brand new car and then it, the car was in an accident, and got hit, the value of that car definitely goes down. So how would you respond? And this is the curiosity part. How would you respond to someone saying, but if my life has been so bad that I have been, quote, in an accident of a psychological accident or something has happened to me where I'm not fully 100 percent perfect, how does my value stay the same? Okay. Uh, back up to that. Uh, first statement, uh, Alan. Yes, you're right. I, I forgot to mention, um, short of burning it, uh, don't give up your value. So if we burn the dollar bill, the $20 bill, yeah, it's then it's pretty much gone. So uh, yes to that point. Um, when you said my life is so bad in that example, there's the broadcast. My life is so bad. And so the universe hears that. Oh, you want a bad life? Because that's the focus. And the universe will deliver through your, your thoughts, your beliefs, your own actions. It will manifest that bad life because that's what we're asking for. I have such a bad life. And so how I would counter or uh, challenge that person 
is to realize when you say my life is so bad, how much longer do you want to stay in that bad life? Um, because you're choosing that bad life. And if you could begin to look at how the, that quote unquote bad life, those unfortunate experiences, um, how they're your teacher and your opportunity to loving yourself and be more perhaps accepting of life circumstances and having more gratitude and appreciation for life rather than despair of life. I often tell people when they're focused on lack and the scarcity and the human condition, I need this, I need that. I often share, you never see a U-Haul behind a hearse. So everything we're attached to in the physical on the human sense is an illusion. And when it's all said and done, how much are you gonna, you're not gonna take your bank account, you're not gonna take your car, your beautiful home, all your wonderful clothes. Um, and the suggestion that perhaps you, the person needs a little realignment. And that's what those unfortunate experiences are teaching them is to, the opportunity to shift the priorities, to shift my own value I put on life in itself, not so much all the, the material possessions and such. Um, and so that's how I would fundamentally approach that person. Um, and so hopefully that answers some of your question, Alan. Yes, it does. Actually, what you're saying is similar to an idea that I've expressed a couple of times that the more tough times we go through, the tougher we become. And so it's kind of like military training. You, you go through this really hard training so that you're more capable of fulfilling whatever mission you were sent to this earth to fulfill. Yeah. And if, if I can add my two cents on this, that it's also in in the realm of so many people I interact with that we've gone into the healing modalities. It's because a lot of this profession has been seeking healing on their own and are so excited that they have found a healing and want to share and bring that forth. Um, it is amazing when we hear how many suffered quite a bit of you know, abuse, a lot of what could have been a bad life, but because of that, they've become more loving. They've given to their children what they wish they had. So through the experiences, yes, we become tougher, but we also have a broader awareness of what, what choice we have to decide of moving forward. It's yes, it's been amazing to hear stories of people overcoming tremendous amounts of what we term a bad beginning. And if I can, if I can piggyback on that, um, much of who I am today is because of my tragedies and uh, darkness and whatever. And I'll, I'll just share uh, about 25 plus years ago, I had a, a, a fiance who died of a sudden death. Uh, I had just gotten back from Disney World. I took my two sons to Disney World. She couldn't go because of work stuff. Um, but um, so I get back and uh, three days later, she had an aneurysm. And uh, two days, three days, four days later, we were putting her in, in the ground. And in my own grief, in that own tragedy, and you know, you're doing a lot of why me and poor me, and you're you're trying to play it out differently, so that it changes the outcome. And you, no matter how you play it out, it's not going to change it. And there was a moment in time there. I went from the why me to poor me to why not me, and it began to really open me up in terms of seeing the the within the tragedy and the grief and the sadness of it all to begin to see what are the opportunities and the, and the possibilities 
to make me a better person and so on and so forth. And <clears throat> the biggest, the most important quality, and it's an ingredient, it's one of four major ingredients of love to me is understanding, acceptance, compassion, and forgiveness. And they go in that particular order and one leads to the other. And I found in my own journey, as well as working with countless numbers of people over the last three decades or so, that acceptance is the pivotal one. Um, and I often ask people, what is it you're not accepting? Um, and that can be a real fundamental building block, if you will, because acceptance is a forward moving energy. And um, we begin to overcome and learn, begin to learn the lessons more fully when we can accept what is. Doesn't mean I like it or agree with it. <laughs> But it is what it is. And so acceptance um, is a major piece of keeping the value of myself, the worthiness of myself. I think that acceptance is also a big part of how we attract that true abundance and that true wealth, if you will, which is beyond money <laughs> and possessions and all that. So, yeah. When... Uh, um Several, several months ago, I received a gift from my good friend, Jim Campbell. Book is conscious, subconscious, super conscious. It was a, basically a turning point in my life. The most powerful book I've ever read. So every day I use it, every morning. I wake up, first thing I do, I go of the book. So I'm touching into the conscious, subconscious, and superconscious. And every person on earth will eventually be utilizing this power of conscious, superconscious, subconscious. So right now I want to, every morning, I want to say, every leader of every country every day is praying for a better world. They have everything going the best for humanity. And as they say, conscious, subconscious, superconscious, they place a desire of all nations have the greatest, the greatest economy they've ever had before. And humanity has earned to the conscious, subconscious, and superconscious about positivity, love, light, prosperity, and all nations praying for other nations. And to say, we are all one family. We are here. We lived in all those countries. We lived in all of them. And then we, we moved here. And we have to be, realize that we are all a member of, this, of the same family. And we are here to help all people of all nations. And with every nation having its greatest economy, with every nation thinking about peace, prosperity for all, it works because the motive is pure. It's pure, loving, kind, considerate. And that's what we are here to do. And David said, what a wonderful talk you gave tonight, David. It was absolutely wonderful. It was fantastic. It brought so many wonderful, wonderful things together. So we here, we are all members of a family. It's called the Copic family, of course, and we help each other go through life, sharing our steps to wisdom, and all that sharing will bring forth. It's a catalyst to create another lifestyle, including the universality of all people, of all nations. So thank you again, David. We are, we are grateful to have you as a speaker. Wonderful. I'm standing ovation, my friend. Well, and you just gave a wonderful little talk there too, John. So kudos mm -hmm. to you as well. I appreciate it. Thank you. Right on, brother. Right on, bro. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Got a lot of stuff going on here. (laughs) Actually, if I can contribute one more little thing based off of what David was saying earlier about his past and how things have progressed since that point, I have on occasion looked back at some of the bad things that have happened in my past, realizing that if they had not happened, then I would not have made certain decisions after that point, leading to where I am now. And I know that I am at least 10 times happier where I am now than where I would have ended up if those things had not happened. And because of that, I am grateful for those things that were, at the time, very painful and difficult to deal with. And well said, Alan, and that kind of reinforces you've heard some people say, you know, they say at the, at the time it was the worst thing that happened, but looking back, it's the best thing that happened. If I may just add, think of the earth and nature is a very powerful teacher of how to live life. In fact, <laughs> nature knows how to live life a lot better than we do in many respects. But the in nature, there's peaks and valleys. And I often see the valley in ourselves as the darkness. And it's important to go into the darkness, but not to be defined or consumed or stuck in the darkness, but work the darkness. And as you work the darkness and you start to begin to climb up to the, to the peak, that's the lesson learned. And then that lesson learned is going to help you when you're on the peak because there's going to be another valley in due time. That lesson learned is going to be helpful in that next valley. And if you think of all of us in our life course, we've been like this. And neither is right or wrong. They're all part of the equation, if you will. The key is not to be afraid of the valley, not to be afraid of that dark night uh, because that's where the most growth and the the most ah ahas and the true wisdom comes from those terrible feelings and (laughs) and whatever and feeling bad doesn't mean i am bad and so if we can see it all as the teacher and the opportunity not so much the threat of the the uh the enemy those are big keys so yeah thank you all May I uh, just share a short story of my journey over the last month because it seems to be. Please do. You, Nancy or Janice, talking about the normal, the new normal. (laughs) Um, So, you know, the pandemic brought end to a whole lot of things. And I realized how much I got fed emotionally by performing for people and sharing music with people. That was my joy, as well as seeing their joy at what I was able to do. And when that got taken away, I mean, I found other things. I got into composing, but I mean, that's a lonely profession, guys. (laughs) You're by yourself in your room with your computer. Um, And I learned a lot. I kind of sank into this gradually energyless space. Just kind of, yeah, okay, do this, keep doing this, keep pushing, keep trusting. And then when I was approached by Cindy, who's the woman who was the leader of this band, my first reaction was, I think I'm over 60s music, number one. I think I was done with that way back when. Number two, I don't feel like carrying my keyboard around all the time again. I'm getting too old for that. My muscles will hurt. And just, I had 10 excuses and I left kind of the whole experience hanging until Alan, I sat on the couch with Alan and I'm talking. I said, you know, I just don't know what to do about this. And he goes, he just looks at me and he goes, you need to do this. This is what makes you happy. And I said, really, you think I should? And I said, don't you think I'll be bored with 60s music? <laughs> and um, 
He says, I think you should do it. So anyway, I said yes. And starting around the end of September, I was given a list, 67 songs. And then they were hinting, well, maybe we can get you in the October 30th gig. Well, you might think you know all these songs because I have heard them. But for me, it meant probably spending an hour creating a chart, figuring out the form. They wanted me to play a lot of the lead breaks that are in there. And I had to literally sit and write out the notes because I thought, wow, that's a lot of work. <laughs> you know, there's a lot going on texture wise. So maybe an hour per song just to get it on a piece of paper where I could go to a rehearsal and have something to do. Then there were a lot of rehearsals and I have been pushing nonstop on this. My body hurts, my, <laughs> my head hurts. I can't stop moving without hearing some melody of some 60s song going on in there. Okay, remember this. This is where they stop. This is where they do this. This is where they do this. And I was like, just overwhelmed to the point where I couldn't think of anything else. But here was the one thing that happened when I actually went to the rehearsal. And I thought, how am I gonna have enough energy to do oh. that? Let me give you a treat so you won't play a trick on me. <laughs> <laughs> and what I didn't know, talk about the new reality, okay? The energy of the interaction just in a rehearsal situation with those girls. I My adrenaline was pumping so high, I wasn't even aware we did a five-hour rehearsal without a break until the next morning when I went, oh, oh my God, my back hurts, my shoulder hurts, I'm just in pain, but I felt so happy. And then here's the thing, last night was my first real gig with them and I wanna to cut to this. And after I got through the first set where I was kinda, of, okay, think, think, don't forget this, they come in here, you have gotta do this here, you gotta, you know, all that. I got through the first set. And then I just started relaxing and I started looking around and I saw the incredible amount of joy in the people who were out there dancing. They were just having so much fun. And even my friends, like Dave and Therese, like I'm thinking, okay, your friends come and they just do that to support you. They tell you, oh, you're doing a good job because they love you. But they were genuinely having a good time. <laughs> and I realized okay, the new reality is I'm moving equipment. I've still got a lot more songs to learn because these girls know over, like they've been together for eight years. They got over a hundred and some songs. But this is the most, it's a different reality, Janice. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm going to have pain. Maybe not. Maybe that's going to pass. I don't know. But the amount of love was just unbelievable. It was unbelievable. It was like this huge bubble. And I could see this is an important thing because these people really love this band. They come to every gig. They dance their hearts out. I mean, I got Halloween presents and I'm looking at these, my bandmates going, what's this? They said, oh, well, they just bring us presents all the time. <laughs> and I'm going, oh my gosh. So, you know, it's a new reality. Um, I don't know where it's going. And I can tell you that I put in hours and hours and bands don't get paid very much. I probably have made a penny an hour. I mean, but it doesn't seem to matter. What seems to matter is that this is all about sharing all that I can do to share love and to see the faces of those people out there as they look up at you and they're bouncing their heads and they're truly happy, especially now when there's a pandemic and people feel isolated. I just know that this is a whole new reality and I don't know where it's going, but I think I, I'm just saying thank you, God, for pointing me in this direction and I'm thanking Alan for giving me the little kick in the butt to do it. <laughs> 
And if I can uh, just add to that, Linda, that your story, which is a wonderful story, that's a classic example of creating, expanding, and renewing. Always moving, never saying no, even though you don't quite know how it's all going to play out. And folks, after about 15 minutes of her up there, you could tell she was nervous and the stage fright and whatever, and that's all part of the, the deal. But after about 15, 20 minutes, she's up there moving and dancing. And whatever. It was, so it was a delight to watch you transform from that nervousness and that, you know, the jitters initially, which is understandable, and then just start to relax and enjoy and work your magic as you do. So, yeah. <laughs> Except I couldn't put my foot up on the keyboard, which they wanted me to do for great balls of fire. I said, well, I got a dress on. Get a, get a fake foot. Right, there's props for that. Get Linda. a fake there's foot and do it. Yeah. I didn't think of that. <laughs> so maybe our new reality is something we can't see ourselves doing. Is maybe exactly. what I'm saying. Your potential was there all along. Yeah. You just go and you look at yourself and say, I don't think I can do this. And then you go, yeah. gosh, I'm doing it. And yeah. Yeah. it was a good thing. So Feel the fear. Been... You know, it wasn't the fear as much as it was. I didn't think I had the energy anymore. Because I've mm -hmm. done that in the past, played in bands. It's exhausting. Yeah. <laughs> but it's something about the energy that flows that you just... You keep going and you don't even realize that you can, it, it feeds you and you keep going and you keep, I will admit my hand started giving out a little by the last set, but maybe that'll get better. <laughs> yeah. So proud of you. Glad you did this, that well, you're doing you. this, that is it a past, it's a it's well, I now. guess I would encourage you all to jump into something that you love. Jump into something you love. And even if you think it seems impossible or you can't, it's amazing how spirit just gives you what you need to do it. You know, it's amazing. For some reason, the thought crossed my mind as you were saying that there's an old phrase that says, God helps those who help themselves. Yeah. When when you jump in to do it, spirit is there to help you. For sure. If, if that, you allow. If you allow. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That's the importance of saying yes to life rather than no. Yeah. When, yeah yes. For sure. Yeah. Because we, we block our own sometimes by saying no when we know we should have said yes. We, yeah. Then we regret not saying yes. So yeah. saying yes. That's what I think that's what the whole um, being here is about learning to say yes and do those things that we never knew that we could do because spirit is giving us that backing, even though we we're not always sure of where is it coming from. We don't have to know that. God knows. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, and it was a Linda, it was an expression of your your gift. And I think Alan was the kick in the butt was needed. The yeah. definition I have of gifts, and we all have one or more, we, there's something we do that we can't help but do it, and we do it very naturally. And there's a part of us that um, even though we might have been trained, we might have taken lessons around it and with it, but we inherently do it, and we can't help but do it. And a lot of people ask us, you know, how do you do that? And you're like, I, I don't know. I, I just do it. And I can't help but do it. That's your gift. And so, yeah. And we're meant to express our gifts, not just for ourselves, but to, to humanity. That's That willingness to serve is part of uh, abundance, I believe. And it's part of creation. Uh, the expression of our inherent gifts and talents and skills for the betterment of humanity and the joy of humanity right. so well i think alan's gift of encouraging you um is a great gift 
I think you're very, very fortunate to have Alan as your life partner who's telling you, you can do this and saying, go for it, instead of saying, oh, you don't want to do that because it's going to affect my life too, you know. It's been great. Well, That's a great gift. Well, I yeah, I knew it was going to affect my life too in a positive way. That's because great. the the better yeah. the higher energy. As long as you're encouraging, that's terrific. You get to tote the keyboard yeah. around more, right, dear? <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess you also have to take go to more the gym. pictures. Yeah. And the pictures. Yeah. You got your in-house roadie with you that can can help you with all the setup and the teardown. Right. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> 